Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of this new Grandmaster Chess series in which we see what we can learn from the greatest players in the world. All right, so today we have Fabiano Caruana uh, rated 2766 here versus uh, the lower rated master Daniel Baria Zuniga rated 2341. And this game was played in 2023, and it's a three-minute blitz game uh, with a two-second increment, it looks like. All right, let's take a look at this. Okay, the game begins with Fabiano playing c4, uh, the English opening. So this move puts a pawn out towards the center and helps control the central d5 square. And in response, uh, Caruana's opponent plays knight to f6, which uh, develops a piece and fights for control of this d5 square and also covers the e4 square, uh, preventing an immediate pawn push with pawn to e4. So the game continues with d4. So Caruana grabs more space in the center. And so that's very important in the opening uh, to move your pawns into the center here and try and control these very important central squares. So the game continues with e6. So this helps apply more pressure to d5 to fight for control of the central square. And it allows room to release this bishop here uh, on f8. And the game continues with an interesting move here by Caruana. So this is a blitz game, and uh, this is probably why this move was played, uh, because it does cause uh, his opponent some problems after this pawn is pushed forward here. So the best move, uh, according to the computer, is to just go ahead and capture this free pawn uh, but that will cause some problems for black here, as we'll see. All right, so the pawn is captured, which was the best move. And now e4 is played. So this move does two things. It uh, develops a pawn to the center to help control more central space. Uh, but at the same time, the queen is uh, unleashed here, attacking the knight. So uh, now black is forced to make a decision on what to do with this knight. And in the game, he played queen to h4. And the computer says that this is a mistake. So it's very interesting now that uh, with this move, I have two different evaluations here. Um, it's saying that... Uh, you know, after queen to e2, it'll be an even game. But after this h4, queen to h4 move, now it is in white's favor, uh, plus 0.34 here. So we see that black, even though he has two pieces developed here, uh, white has this strong central pawn formation. Uh, but, you know, according to the computer, white is ahead here, controlling all this space. Even though black has developed two pieces, they are off to the side of the board, and black is threatening a mate in one here. Uh, and of course, Caruana will stop that with queen to e2, which the computer says is a great move here. Uh, now, this pawn is protected in the center, the pawn here on f2. Uh, which the queen is threatening to deliver mate on. Uh, that is protected as well. So white fends off this attack by black. And the game continues with knight to c6. So the computer says that is a good move, uh, but not the best. According to the computer, a retreat of this knight would have been better here. Uh, but we see that black is probably just trying to develop pieces and you know obtain and keep a lead in development uh, by bringing out another knight here but uh, the computer gives the evaluation you know in white's favor here and now 
uh, we see why it is usually not a good idea to bring your queen out early in the game because Carwana develops a knight towards the center controlling important central squares but at the same time he attacks this queen uh, and now the queen will have to run so uh, that's one thing we can learn from this game uh, that it's usually not a good idea to bring your queen out too early and if you do develop the queen usually it's better to keep it on your second or third ranks where it is safer and cannot be chased around by uh, your opponent's pieces all right so the queen retreats back to h5 and uh, the computer says that this is the best move to retreat here to h5 and it looks like white is in the lead now and the game continues with a developing move by Carwana, knight to c3, uh, which the computer gives as best. And it is almost always good to develop your knights to f3 and c3, where they control a lot of central squares. Uh, and to develop your knights before your bishops, as the knights are slower, so it's better to bring them out first. And the bishops, they can go across the board uh, in one move, uh, but you don't know in the beginning exactly where the best move will be. So it's a lot of times a good idea to hold back your bishops until you figure out where the best square to develop them will be. All right, uh, let's move on here. Now black uh, makes a good move, but not the best. Uh, he develops another piece, bishop to b4 here, pinning the knight to the king. Uh, and the computer wanted f5 here uh, to help uh, fight for control of the center uh, and also maybe help protect this knight. Uh, and so the game continues with bishop to d2, breaking this pin on the knight. Uh, but the computer says that's an inaccuracy. Although not a large one, but uh, the computer wanted h3 to try and put pressure on this knight. Uh, so instead, bishop to d2 was played, breaking the pin, uh, developing another piece, and white is ready to castle queenside as well. So now uh, d6 is played, which the computer gives that as best which helps fight for control of the center and possibly backs up a e5 pawn push in the future, which will allow this bishop room to develop. So the game continues with white castling queenside and the computer gives that as an inaccuracy. Once again, it prefers h3, uh, putting pressure on this knight. Uh, also, uh, by moving this pawn forward, the bishop could protect the pawn and allow the queen, or excuse me, the rook to move away to g1 and take control of this half open file. And then we would have uh, the pawn protected on h3 by the bishop. At the moment, uh, the knight and the rook are protecting the queen and knight attack here. Although, uh, if this knight were to move forward here, it would pin itself to the queen. So this pawn here on the h file is uh, pretty safe at the moment. But the game continues with a castling king side by black. Now the computer says that this is best, uh, but it is pretty risky here. As this bishop is aimed up here, uh, the knight and queen are close to the uh, king side, and this rook could jump here to this half open g file, aiming at the king. Uh, and, you know, and eventually the other rook could swing over here. So this may be dangerous, uh, you know, for Carwana's opponent to castle on this open king side here. All right. So h3 now is finally played, but now the computer says this is an inaccuracy. So another thing we can learn uh, from these games is that timing definitely makes a difference. So a move that may be good at one point, if you wait too long, 
to play that move, you know, then of course it may not be as good to play later. All right, so now we continue the game. Uh, after this h3 move, the knight is under attack, and uh, now we have knight to f6 being played, and the computer says that's a mistake, that f5 uh, would have been better trying to fight, you know, counterattack in the center. Uh, and so the knight could not be captured here um, as, you know, if this pawn were to capture that knight when it was on g4, if I go back here, uh, then the queen could just capture uh, this unprotected rook here. So that's why now the computer prefers moving that rook uh, because you know, then you could really threaten an attack on that knight. All right, moving on. The knight retreats, and now uh, rook to g1 is played, which is considered best by the computer, lining up on the king here. And the game continues with h6. A mistake is made here. So uh, this was probably played to prevent the rook from coming up here and attacking the queen, uh, but it did weaken the king side by pushing a pawn forward and creating a target uh, for this bishop possibly here in the future. Uh, so the game continues, uh, well before we uh, go on, instead of h6 it looks like bishop takes c3 was preferred uh, by the computer to keep the game uh, almost even, but still slightly in white's favor. And so the game continues with queen to e3 here, uh, further lining up uh, on this h6 pawn. But, uh, and we'll see why this, this move was made later in the game. We'll see why this becomes an important move, even though the computer says that it's an inaccuracy and prefers queen to d3 here. Uh, but the game continues on with a uh, capture. But once again, we see the timing is not as good here because now bishop takes c3. Uh, the computer says that's a mistake, that e5 would have been better to try and counterattack in the center. And so uh, now after the knight is captured, b takes c3. And here the computer prefers a capture with the bishop. But we'll see why Caruana uh, left his bishop here uh, with the queen. He wanted to keep this battery aimed at h6. And we'll see why that's an important move. All right, so moving on, we have king to h8. So uh, the king wanted to get off of this uh, half open file where the rook was aimed at the king uh, because there was the possibility of just capturing here and this pawn would be pinned so the queen would have to capture and then the bishop could have captured and uh, this pawn would have been pinned to the king. So the king moves off to the side here. Um, you know, maybe he didn't want to move down here to h7 as this bishop still has to move and could possibly line up on this diagonal. Uh, or he maybe wanted to have room uh, for his knight to move back and then jump forward. But uh, we'll see what happens next here. So now, we have bishop to e2 lining up on the queen. Uh, the computer says that's an inaccuracy, uh, but uh, it prefers e5, although uh, you know it, it didn't make too much of a difference, 0.33. Uh, so you know this bishop to e2 move is probably still good. And if we look at the game now, Caruana has developed pretty much all of his pieces. And uh, if we, and he has a, an offensive attack going here on the king side, where his opponent still has not developed this bishop, and this rook is over here not doing much at all. Uh, even though this rook is blocked in, this half open file uh, could allow the rooks to double up here and 
put more pressure on Black's king side. All right, so moving on, uh, we have queen to a5, which, excuse me, it appears that this was the game uh, losing mistake here because now uh, the evaluation has jumped drastically in White's favor. So with queen to a5, a defender of the king side moves away and opens the king side up to attack. Now we see that you know Black was probably trying to put uh, you know put together some threats against the king. He could check here, although the king could just move over, um, you know, or he could just try and attack this pawn and then possibly attack here. But it's too late because now after he moves here. Uh, we have the sacrifice of this rook, a brilliant move by Caruana. Uh, and if this rook is not captured, there's the threat of an immediate mate here with queen uh, capturing on h6. And as this was a three minute blitz game, uh, the opponent was probably surprised, maybe running out of time. And the game continued with King capturing the Rook. Uh, but this is an inaccuracy which leads to a mate in four. Uh, it looks like Queen to H5 uh, would have been the best move. So if we go back and look at this Queen to H5 move, uh, this still leaves the game in, uh, you know, heavy plus territory for white uh, even after this move it looks like white uh, the best move for white would be to just double up here by bringing the other rook over uh, and now you know black would be in all kinds of trouble but uh, the game didn't end that way uh, instead uh, after this move the rook was captured which allowed um, white to take advantage of this queen and bishop battery by capturing here uh, with check and so here Caruana's opponent resigned uh, but play may have continued with uh, king retreating the only move available and then after check uh, the only thing black could do is just block here uh, so after that block, the knight is captured, and then a block by the queen, and then we would just have mate here. So uh, an interesting game where, you know, although it was a blitz game, so mistakes can be made in these blitz games, uh, and if you're under attack in a blitz game, it can be harder to defend. Uh, but Caruana pretty much smacked his opponent around, uh, in this game, especially in the end there, uh, leading to an interesting attacking win and checkmate at the end. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed uh, this first episode of this new Grandmaster Chess series. Uh, and if we look at the, the computer review here, this is very interesting. Uh, it looks like... Uh, a computer analysis uh, review, it states that Caruana played at a 2,900 level here and his 2,300 opponent only played at a 1,750 level. And if we look at the opening accuracy, uh, Caruana had 94.5 and his opponent had 86. Uh, and then here, you know, even though Caruana only had 69.4% accuracy. The opponent uh, you know, probably did worse, of course, because it led to a loss, uh, but there's not enough information to grade that. But uh, here, the computer says white really outplayed black in that one. White played better than black in the opening, but it was sloppy. The middle game was messy, but white got the better of it. Anyway, uh, I hope that game taught you a little bit, uh, you know, especially about controlling the center, uh, getting your pieces developed, and 
uh, especially in a blitz game, if you can get an attack going in open lines against your king, uh, your opponent will be busy defending and have less time to counterattack. Uh, which Black tried to do here, but by then it was too late, especially when he moved this queen away. It opened the king side up even more for white. All right. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, feel free to leave comments or suggestions, and uh, make sure you set up the notifications to alert you to uh, more episodes of these uh, Grandmaster chess games so we can learn and see what the best players in the world at chess um, do in their games. And uh, I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you all.